On this episode of Locked On Angels, it's Fan Mail Friday, and like you and everyone around you, they're talking about Trout. Everybody wants to know, what's up with Mike Trout? Well, we've got some details and we've got some answers. It's time to get Locked On with Mike and John, and this is Locked On Angels. You are Locked On Angels, your daily Los Angeles Angels podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks for making Locked On Angels your first listen of the day. You can find us anywhere you get your podcasts, including Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and SiriusXM by searching Locked On Angels. And if you'd like to get back to the Super Halo Bros for all this Super Halo content, here's some things that you can do. Leave us a rate and a review on Apple Podcasts. If you're watching on YouTube, hit that thumbs up button. And if you're not subscribed already, go ahead and subscribe. It's time to do it. Become a Locked On Every Day. Or whether you're watching or listening, come over to YouTube, leave a comment. It's one of the best ways to get in touch with John and I and be a part of the conversation. And this episode of Lockdown Angels is brought to you by SupplyHouse.com. SupplyHouse.com is the reliable way to get parts fast. Shop your next plumbing, HVAC, or electrical job and get fast shipping from coast to coast at SupplyHouse.com. Happy Fan Mail Friday to you, and thanks for being here for this episode of Lockdown Angels, where it's your team every day. You've got the Frisch Brothers here with you, a.k.a. the Super Halo Bros. My name is John, and that's my brother Mike. And my name is Mike, and that's my brother John. It's our third season here talking Angels baseball every single Monday through Friday on Lockdown Angels. We're happy that you're here with us all five days a week. We appreciate you being in every day or with us. On today's show, it's Fan Mail Friday. Lots to get to, lots of questions to get to, Mike. And we're going to start it out with a little discussion about... Mike Trout, what's the, what's the latest on him? Yeah, everybody's talking about Trout. So here's a couple of things that we know as of this recording. On Wednesday, we were told that Trout was headed back to Southern California to be reevaluated. The Salt Lake Bees manager, Keith Johnson, said that Trout felt something during his single at bat in the game. And Jeff Fletcher later reported, later in the evening, Trout told Wash, that he felt better and it prompted some hope that he could be on the field the next day, but they are sending him to SoCal. He's in fact in SoCal getting evaluated. As of this recording, we don't have any details on that, but is getting evaluated to make sure everything is okay. No direction on what will happen next, but there are a lot of questions, John, that were flooding our inbox and direct messages flooding us. And so yeah. we're, we're going to hit some of those thoughts that you brought to us. The first one is this, John. So if this happened in the batter's box, protecting Trout and having him DH seems kind of pointless, doesn't it? Yeah, he's got to be a hitter. And every single time that he's up there uh, matters, Mike. And so it doesn't matter if he's in the center field, left field, first base. We've we've talked about all these different moves that they could do to kind of mitigate the, the issues that Mike Trout has had over the years. But if it's something that's happening in the batter's box, it's kind of a moot point at that yeah. point, right? It doesn't matter if it's neither here nor there. If he's having trouble in the batter's box, I mean, that's key to who Mike Trout is. Even if he was a full-time DH, this would be an issue. So uh, it's it's concerning. That's yeah. all we can say at this point is that it's very concerning that this meniscus tear has kept him out of action for so long when there's a lot of precedent for people who have come back really quick from this. So I'm concerned that the damage is worse than they thought initially reported. I mean, not that they were hiding in hiding something. It's just that maybe they assessed him wrong when things got this whole thing got started. I don't know. I really can't tell you, but at the end of the day, if he's getting hurt and it's bothering him while he's in the batter's box, that's definitely not a good thing. Mike, with all these injuries, trout demanding a trade is a lot less likely in the off season, right? Right. I mean, I can't see why he would, I mean, if the Angels continue just to not do anything, then I, I can understand why he would bring up the conversation about where we're going and what this team is about. But right now, Johnny, he doesn't have any leverage. He no. doesn't have any... Especially any... in his knees. <laughs> right. Not any skin in the game here. He, like he Like, he's just been out for so many years. He hasn't played a, a group of games consecutively. I mean, this guy doesn't have any sort of fight when it comes to, hey, I, I really want to win with this team. And I think that the response can be, yeah, we want to win with you too, but you got to be on the field, bro, mm -hmm. right? And I and I know it's Mike Trout, and, and we honor Mike Trout. We love Mike Trout. But I think that right now he's not the guy. He's just one of the guys because yeah. he hasn't been on the field and hasn't been able to perform on the field consistently for years. And, and it's frustrating, I know, for him because you see it on his face. Yeah. Interesting thing about all of this surgery conversation is if there is a deeper issue, 
I would assume, and we might need Dr. Top plays to help us out here, but I would assume that the doctor, the surgeon would recognize that perhaps the knee is in worse condition than they initially thought when they opened him up, right? Well, here's the thing. There were there were two routes they could have gone, right? One was more of a temporary solution and one was more of a, hey, this is going to knock you out for the rest of the year solution. And they did the temporary one. They did the, they did the quick fix, Mike. And so at this point, you kind of have to wonder, do they need to go back in there and do the long-term solution? Because yeah, a lot of athletes get both versions of it and people have gotten what Mike Trout has gotten and it's been fine, but it runs the risks of re-hurting it again, the cartilage, uh, again, that meniscus is kind of the, the padding, if you will, between ligaments and knees and joints and bone. And so for him to get the, the short-term solution was a red flag for me, to be honest. And mm. we discussed it on this show and it, it makes me really concerned um, that they didn't choose the right direction for Mike Trout, whether it was his decision. I'm sure that he was involved in that, obviously. But at the same time, the, the short-term solution kind of makes me leery of, did they did they do the right thing here? And listen, I just want to give myself credit because we with all this Salt Lake Bees talk and Mike Trout and knees, I didn't make one Bees knees joke the whole time, okay? <laughs> First of all. Right, uh, right. Good for you. <laughs> does this mean that Trout moves on from being the, the face of the Halos to just one of the Halos, kind of like what you were saying? Look, it... I give Trout the benefit of the doubt because of everything he's done in his career, sure. everything he's done with the Halos and wanting them to get better, want, and being one of the only reasons to watch them at times. But the last three years have been so absolutely frustrating. The last full season he played was the truncated 60-game season, and they had a baby during that time. They had their first son, so he didn't even play – that full season in terms of, you know, staying healthy and whatnot, he was healthy, but he did, you know, take some time off for that and, and everything. So what do you say face of the halos to just one of the guys he's going to be on this team. And as long as he's on this team, people are going to see him as Mike Trout and the angels. And so I don't think that that changes anything one, because he's Mike Trout two because he's got the long contract and three, because he's been so loyal to this team. I think that whenever he does come back, fans are going to welcome him back and it's going to be an exciting moment. But I do think that play on the field matters and what you're going to find over the next, depending on what happens with Trout, is that Zach Neto and Logan Ohapi are certainly going to become more of the guys that we look to. And you're going to hear the national media, if they do talk about the Angels, talk about those two guys. In fact, Zach Neto was on, on a, the Trent Rush podcast when they were talking about uh, the angels and things like that. And, and it was a great interview with him. And he talked about his competitive fire and his excitement and wanting to win. And that narrative is something that each of these guys have been just hammering over and over and over again. And yet with trout, he wants to win, but he hasn't been able to help this team with, mm -hmm. when with Zach Neto and Logan O'Hoppy and those guys, they actually can help this team win. And yeah. so I think that what happens is that no matter what happens with trout, He's going to be the face of this franchise, but I think that you're going to find that fans are going to really fall in love with the Zach Nettos and with the Logan O'Hoppies. John, there was a question from it's Z to you on Insta. And they asked anyone think Trout should sit out this year and hmm. let the kids play and return in 2025. What do you think? Yeah. At this point, there's not much to go for here. I know that the illusion of eight games back is exciting and you feel like you could do really well with Trout, but Mike, they have to do the right thing at the deadline, and they've got to trade all the pieces that they absolutely can at the deadline. And that doesn't include Mike Trout, everybody, who says, we're going to trade Trout. Trout has a no-trade clause, so it's not up to the team whether they trade him or not. And so it's going to be up to Mike Trout, and he's made it very, very clear, in case you missed the hundreds of articles and the hundreds of hours we've spent talking about it on Lockdown Angels, he's not going anywhere. So right. just let that thought dissolve out of your brain because it's not going to happen at this point. Yeah. Let the kids figure it out. In fact, that roster spot of Mike Trout on the, on the IL. So you can have somebody else there can be put to good use for another outfielder. If they want to try it, an infielder, uh, another pitcher, something like that. They have the ability to do that. And again, if he needs to go back under the knife and, and get this surgery redone or what have you and do the long-term solution, 
I say that you go for it. I say that that's what needs to happen. Uh, so at, at, in return in 2025, that's great. Here's the thing, Mike. We thought, oh, you know what? He had the the calf issue that really stopped him in 21. Um, then he comes back and he has the back issue, which kept him out not as long. Remember, he came back and went on a tear in 22. Yeah. Then he breaks the hamate bone in 23. And this offseason, you and I went, what else does he have left to to hurt here? I mean, sorry, and, we and, asked that question. I, guess. I know because now it's now it's the knee, and so it's just going to be it's going to be a problem the rest of his career. Oh, yeah. the wrist issue. Uh, oh, the the waist issue. You know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, he's he got a broken pinky toe. You know what I mean? And so it's just really frustrating that year after year there's stuff to deal with. So at this point, I think that if he gets a long term solution surgery here, if that's what's necessary, then they need to do that. They need to uh, move forward and let the kids play in 2025. Mike, at what point is this all over for Trout and calls it a career? What do you say? I think when he's mentally drained, and it doesn't seem like he's mentally drained at this point. Hmm. And when he announced that he hurt his knee, again, there were tears and there were emotions, but he's driven to come back and he's mm-hmm. itching to get out there. I don't think that that love and passion for the game is gone from Trout, but at some point, if he starts sounding like Anthony Rendon, then we would say, I would say, <laughs> it's time to call it a career, right? Anthony Rendon. And we've had conversations about that, but Mike Trout seems like he really enjoys baseball and Trout actually seems like he really enjoys playing baseball on the Angels. And so when that is over, when he's mentally drained, when he feels like he can't get back over that hurdle again, then I think he needs to wave the white flag. Mm -hmm. But Johnny, he's had to come back and come back and come back and come back. And you'll hear sports athletes, no matter what sport they're playing, they'll talk about how difficult it is to rehab and go through all of the issues. You've heard the double Tommy John surgery people and having to go through that again. That's exhausting. Mm -hmm. And it it wears you down. We saw Ren Hifo who missed what, 10, 15 games when they interviewed him on Sunday. And, and, he, he was back. Like there, there was this, this stirring in him for, I can't wait to get back. I want to play. I want to yeah. see these guys play and I want to play alongside of them. I want to win. I want to be on the field. And so when that goes away, I think that that's when trout and his wife and his family need to sit down and go, man, we got to call it a day. The, the reality is, is that trout is under contract with the angels yeah. and until he's 41, 42 years old. Right. So we have him for a bit. And so I think he has the luxury of being able to say, I'm going to keep trying to come back because I want to honor the contract and I want to win with this team. Hey, thanks for making Locked On Angels your first listen of the day. The Angels are playing the A's at 6.38 Pacific time. You can catch every pitch of the Angels hometown broadcast on Sirius XM or the SXM app. All you got to do is search Angels. Coming up on Locked On Angels, what should the Halos get if they trade away Anderson, Estevez, and the other ones that we're expecting them to trade? We'll talk about all of that coming right up. Locked on Angels is brought to you by our friends at Booking.com. Listen, traveling can be so confusing and so overwhelming, especially for traveling, maybe following your favorite baseball team, the Angels, as they travel all over the United States. That's why you need Booking.com with hotels, bed and breakfast, vacation rentals, resorts, so much more on Booking.com. You just might find your perfect stay, and it might be in your rival city, and you won't care. It'll be awesome. From hotels that overlook stadiums to family-friendly resorts, Booking.com has so many choices across the United States for your summer travel pl- your summer travel plans. Easy for me to say. The right stay can make you a fan in any city. So take the guesswork out of your travel and flex your booking power with our new everydayers at Booking.com. You can book today on their website or their app, Booking.com, Booking. Yeah. And today's show is brought to you by our friends at FanDuel. FanDuel is going to keep you engaged whether your favorite team is winning or losing. And we've all been there, ourselves included, Mike and I included. With FanDuel, you don't just have to stick to baseball either. You can bet on all kinds of sports whenever you want. All you have to do is open up the app, dream up any bets at any time, and that you're in the mood to put a little money down on FanDuel. So in this summer... While the summer games are going on, FanDuel is hooking up all customers with a boost or a bonus daily. Listen, if you're a fantasy guy like me and you know which guys are doing really well out there that aren't on the Angels, FanDuel's for you because you can make bets on those teams instead. So there's something for everyone all summer long, every single day. Head on over to FanDuel.com and start making the most out of your summer. FanDuel 
is the official sports betting partner of Major League Baseball. Thanks for making Locked On Angels your first listen of the day. Now for your second listen, check out Locked On Sports Today. It's a free 24-7 sports streaming channel program just for you every single day to bring you the biggest stories in sports. Locked On Sports Today brings you can't-miss analysis, opinions, news, streaming 24-7 on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app. It's part of the Locked On Podcast Network where it's your team every day. And the Angels play the A's tonight at 6.38 Pacific Time. And you can catch every pitch of the Angels' hometown broadcast with SiriusXM. On the SXM map, just search Angels. Johnny, let's talk about the trade deadline and some of the things that people are wondering about. So why don't you get us started with that first question? Yeah, from Pop123. Five six one five six. It's easy to remember. <laughs> That's the same password I have in my luggage. Is that a uh, troll? <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Do you guys think Artie will decide not to trade players at the deadline and stay competitive? Now, to me, this question stems out of the fact that the Angels find themselves eight games out of first place in the AL West. AL West is just an anomaly this year. For the Astros to gain all the ground that they did and come back is just incredible. Uh, and and for the Mariners to fall off the way that they did is just incredible as well. So do I think Artie will not decide to trade players at the deadline and stay competitive? What do you say, Mike? Johnny, I think that we have to be cautious about the trade deadline. Obviously, we think the Angels should sell, sell, sell. But it doesn't mean that they're going to do everything that's necessary at the trade deadline. Hmm. They might perhaps wait until the off season. Hmm. And I know that that might be frustrating for angel fans, but the reality is, is that you might actually get better deals for certain players in the off season versus right now. For example, Garrett crochet with the white Sox is somebody who has said, I'm not pitching in the postseason unless you give me a contract extension. Hmm. He's mentioned that a couple of times now. So that puts a, Huge roadblock up for the White Sox as they try to trade him. But what can happen is that you go to the offseason, teams can have some time to give him a physical, see how he is, and then say, okay, we can give you a contract extension. We're going to trade for you in the offseason. And perhaps the White Sox might get a bit more for him. The point being that the Angels could probably do the same thing with some of the players that they have available. Mm. It wouldn't be awful, awful, awful if they hang on to Tyler Anderson until the off season, and then maybe perhaps are able to trade him for some top prospects and some guys for teams that are trying to retool and get fired up for spring training and for the regular season. Now, does that lessen his trade value? I guess we're going to have to wait and see, right? Mm -hmm. Does he have more value now versus in the off season? Again, it's going to be a wait and see. My opinion would be, I think his trade value is more now at the deadline than in the off season. But I think that if any sort of pullback happens, it may not be a stay competitive. It may be a, we probably can get something better in the off season. Although I'm saying all of this <laughs> with high hopes that they're going to make really wise decisions. And you know how the angels operate often. <laughs> yeah. I think already they have to absolutely convince already that this is not a competitive season, whether they keep Tyler Anderson or not, Mike, like I, we've said it many times. I think Tyler Anderson is going to regress to the expected numbers. He's going to regress to the means, and that's fine. He's still going to be a decent player and a yeah. decent pitcher. Yeah. But right now, just having him on this team, minute by minute, his value goes up, especially when you have situations like Garrett Crochet being the way that he is. When you have Tariq Skubal is going to command a huge return right. because he's got years of control left, and the Tigers are going to want everything for him. Tyler Anderson is that happy medium where a team like the Mets, who might not be so keen on Jose Quintana as part of their six-man rotation, they're getting Kodai Senga bat, back, but they're going to do a six-man rotation, and you might want to up somebody in your rotation mm -hmm. who's better than what you already have. There's right. talk that they might even move uh, Luis Severino mm -hmm. because they need some other positions, and even though he's been the best pitcher in their rotation – uh, they might need to move him to upgrade in other areas. So there's a lot at play here, but the minute by minute, Tyler Anderson gets more valuable. I think about Carlos Estevez and we just saw the trade or the, the news that Mason Miller broke his hand. Yeah. Um, and so that automatically makes Carlos Estevez 
probably the most valuable reliever option out there at the moment, especially for a team that's selling like the Angels. So I, I really don't think that they will neglect trading the deadline deals, or I should say the uh, expiring deals that the Angels have. That's got to be priority number one. Mm-hmm. Priority two is see what you can do now to get the most value out of guys like Luis Renjifo or Tyler Anderson, even Taylor Ward. Look, a month ago, Taylor Ward probably would have commanded some significant pieces, but at the moment, things have cooled off because he's cooled off, and there's no reason to move him now if you can't get the best return possible for Ward. That's kind of a an off-season thing if that's what they want to do. Uh, Emmanuel Manzan from Instagram asked, any specific prospects that you'd like to see us get for Anderson, Estevez, etc. The only thing that I would say to this, Johnny, is I think the Angels are going to look for ready now players or players that are not too far away mm-hmm. from the majors. That seems to be what they would probably go after. Um, if they can, I know it's not going to happen, but I, I want to just throw out the idea of like Gunnar Henderson, not Gunnar Henderson, um, um, who's the minor league guy for the for the Orioles? Holiday, Matt Holiday, Jackson, ja- Jackson Holiday, yeah, Jackson yeah. Holiday for Tyler Anderson, kind of idea, right now hear me i'm not saying that that's going to happen i'm not saying that that could ever happen what i'm saying is is that that's the type of players that i think the halos would go after ones that are almost ready or that are ready to be at the major league level what do you think any any names come up any thoughts come up there yeah a couple of weeks ago when we talked about this uh connor norby was a name from the orioles who is 100 percent ready to play he, mm-hmm. he needs a spot mike uh the thing is now that the angels drafted for need and they got Christian Moore. I'm not sure that they would pursue a second baseman like Connor Norby. I still say you do it because having that guy ready to play for you right now would be a great option for you. The Mets actually have some starting pitching depth that they can deal from as well. Uh, I'm looking up the, the Mets top prospects here, but at the moment that Connor Norby makes a great option and I'm hopping over to the Mets and looking at some of the starting pitching depth that they have. Yeah, they got some guys in Double A that could be ready to come up and mm. and play. They got a couple guys in Triple A that might be able to pitch for you, and and that's a huge need yeah. for the Angels. So yeah, there 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 are some guys who are kind of bouncing back and forth between the majors and the minors for the Mets that are starting pitchers. So that would be an option as well. You really have to look at who has the needs of a Carlos Estevez yeah. and who has the needs of a Tyler Anderson, the guys that you want to, to trade away. You've got to see what those teams are, are needing from you so that you can look at their prospects and go, Hey, what could we get back? So that's why, again, I'm, I'm thinking about Connor Norby from Baltimore. Baltimore could certainly use Carlos Estevez. They could certainly use a Tyler Anderson. I don't think yeah. it's out of the realm of possibility to, for the angels to, to get a return like that mike many of our locked on everydayers asked who are the guaranteed players getting traded at the deadline predict the future what do you say i want to say anderson and estevez for sure i'm going to put a question mark on renjifo and ward mm-hmm. i think ward doesn't go anywhere for sure i think renjifo stays not that they're going to give him a long-term deal or extend him which is something you and i've talked about they're just not going to do anything but i just don't think they're going to do anything at least right now Yeah, I think that maybe in the offseason they might do something, but right now I can't see them doing anything. So I would say Estevez, Anderson for sure. I think some of the one-year guys like Garcia and Matt Moore for sure. Those are the ones that I'm going to, like, I would put a stamp on and say, I'd be shocked if after the trade deadline, they're still on the halos. Yeah, I'm thinking uh, thinking Renjifo's drawing a lot of attention right now. And if you're the Angels, he's the best he's ever been. So I think that they have a, a good shot at trading him. So I, I'm, I'm going to predict when he I want to see an extension. I want him to be extended. I'm, he's entering his prime, but if they let him go to another team and the deal is right, the deal has to be yes. phenomenal yes. for a guy like when Locked on Angels is brought to you by SupplyHouse.com. You can order supplies from the website that's made for skilled trades. Find thousands of parts from hundreds of brands in just a couple of clicks at SupplyHouse.com. SupplyHouse.com gives you 24-7 access to a huge selection of plumbing, HVAC, and electrical supplies. Plus, you get fast delivery anywhere in the United States. And if you need help with an order, you can get industry-leading after-sales service from some of their friendly and knowledgeable 
customer support team. And you get to talk to a real person every single time. And then there's great news for plumbers and technicians and contractors. Being a pro has a lot of perks. Trade industry professionals can join their free trade master program for free shipping and serious discounts on every single order over a hundred thousand pros have already trusted the trade master program to deliver results and you can apply you can apply for membership today and get a competitive edge on every single order at supplyhouse.com slash tm and you can save time and money when you order online order plumbing hvac and electrical supplies from supplyhouse.com real people real service Michael, we've got a couple of questions for Fan Mail Friday about Perry Manassian and his future. Let's start with a question from Roberto J16. He said, How bad does GMPM look after not signing the Angels' third round? pick. Why don't you take us through what in the world happened here? Yeah. So th- Ryan Prager was the third round pick. He went back to school. He's a pitcher who went back to school for Texas A&M. So here's the reality. He's a sophomore heading into his junior year and he can get more money with the name image likeness NIL than anything the Halos could possibly give him right mm. now. And so the guess is that Prager saw what TGA Trey Gregory Alford got as an 11th round pick and said, Oh, more than, than he got because Prigger was the third round pick. So what he can do is he can up his stock this season and and then go play for Texas A&M, who are going to be really, really good, by the way, and then re-enter next year. Now, this is unusual, but it's not an anomaly. This has happened mm-hmm. in, in years past, especially with early round draft picks. But Johnny, does this make Perry Manassian look bad? It feels like it should. <laughs> and, no. and the reason why I say that is because this doesn't happen all that often. Now, there is a whole wrinkle in the fact that this whole name, image, likeness payout that college players can get now, that's kind of a new thing in the last couple of years uh, in terms of you know college players getting money for being an athlete. Like this is something that has has changed in recent times now to me mike it makes me wonder was there not a relationship here Hmm. ahead of time because usually that's how these things work out what did they not have a good communication between his agent and what perry and and tim mickelvain were trying to do it just seems odd to me and i don't know if it's incompetence you know everybody can scream well what a classic angels move that this is Uh, to me I just think, yes, there's a ton of incentive for Ryan Prager to go back to school and earn more money as a college pitcher and then come out of next year's college season, maybe a higher draft pick at sure. that point. Yeah. So I don't know. This this feels icky to me because it seems like there was a communication breakdown here. At the same time, it could be that maybe Prager went back on his – his word, I mean, look, it's it's never a solid thing if you say, yeah, I want to be drafted by you guys. There's there's not a, an official deal in place, but I don't know if Prager went back on his word. But, but the thing is, is that the Angels will retain the rights until the next draft. And because he didn't sign, the specific rule says if a player selected in the third round of the draft does not sign, a club receives an extra compensation p- selection between the third and fourth rounds. In the next rule four, rule four draft, the club selecting in inverse order of the league standing from the previous season. So they will get a compensation pick there. Uh, the problem is, is that this pick was higher for Ryan Prager than it was what next year's yeah. pick will be. But it is a better draft class next year, Mike. Right. And so right. that might be the trade off here at the end of the day. This, like we talked about with Lindsey Crosby, not a fantastic uh, draft class this season um, from uh, Aaron Cantor. He said, do you think GMPM deserves an extension? And what about wash Johnny? When it looks, when I look at GMPM, I know that there are, it's, it feels like, it feels like politics, right? It feels like there are far right and far left people when it comes to <laughs> GMPM. I, I guess my, my personality is always kind of like I'm swimming in the, the lukewarm middle sometimes, right? The, the neutral, nuance. The, yeah. And so I think that he deserves an extension simply because he needs to have at least one more year with his manager that he selected. Mm -hmm. And so 
I think you got to at least give him one more year. Give him a give him an opt in year this next year. And I think that he's done a pretty good job with what the parameters have been with Zach Neto, Nolan Shawnawell, and Logan Ohapi performing like they are. I'd also like to see what would happen with these guys that he's drafted. The, the reality is, is that people who get upset with this draft, <laughs> you don't really, you can't really evaluate a draft until three to five years after it's over. Mm-hmm, right. Mm-hmm. And so that's the thing. Like if you're really fired up about this draft and like, Oh, he did, he's terrible. And this, like you you just don't, you just don't know because mm-hmm. the last few drafts, the angels have said, people have said that it hasn't been great drafts and that their minor leagues are terrible. And yet here they are. The reason why their minor leagues are terrible is because a lot of the players are in the majors and they're relying on three specific players that they've drafted uh, in the last couple of years or have been drafted in the last couple of years and Ohapi and Sean Owell and, and, and Zach Nitto. So I would say, yes, extend both of them, but I would probably extend both of them for one more year. Let Wash finish out this next year and then reevaluate halfway through next season. Yeah, I, I had to pick a bone with Sam Blum the other day because he was talking about the Angels all pitcher draft and didn't give a lot of credit to the results of that. Now, by my count, I answered that question a couple of weeks ago. There were 11 realistically viable pitchers that came out of that draft. And of course, three of them are not with the Angels anymore. And so that le- leaves about eight pitchers from that draft of 20 uh, that could be and should be major leaguers at some point, two of which are Sam Bachman and Chase Silseth, who have already had major league experience. I think judging, especially pitchers, whether they made it to the majors or not, is not a good evaluation this soon, you know, three years later. I mean, you want to take your time with arms. And so I think that we're going to see those 2021 guys start to come up to the majors here soon, especially if they trade away the bullpen arms. Mike Carlos Risen said, if Perry isn't extended, what do you think the future of the franchise is? Well, I'm with you. I think that he needs to be paired up with Ron Washington at least one more time. But here's the problem. We got to go through the song and dance of another GM and and hiring somebody who's never been a GM before because Artie likes to hire cheap and he's going to give first time guys their first opportunities. This is going to be Perry's fifth year as as the GM coming up. And it takes like you always say it takes about three years to put your fingerprints on an organization. Well, we're seeing those fingerprints of Perry Manassian with Sean Owell and Neto and Ohapi and and those guys. So. To me, if he's not extended, then I think we go back to square one. And there's not a baseball ops guy out there or a president of baseball somewhere that the Angels could poach because, number one, they're cheap, so they wouldn't leave their position. Number two, there's nobody who really wants to leave their position right now. David Stern's got that spectacular deal with the Mets because he earned it with the Brewers. And so the Mets were like, let's go get that guy. Mm-hmm. And 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 so that that's not going to happen with the Angels. So we're going to end up in the same situation with a first-time GM starting from scratch in an organization that he doesn't know. I think you got to give Perry Manassian an extension and at least see through what he's already started with the draft. Let him live or die by the by the draft picks that he's made and let him live or die by the trades that he's made to get younger players in this organization. It, it's, I think you got to let him die on this Hill if it's the Hill that he wants to die on, but you have to give him the opportunity to do that. And you can only do that if he's here after this season. Hey, thanks for making locked on angels. Your first listen of the day. The angels play the A's at six thirty eight Pacific time. Catch every pitch of the angels hometown broadcast with Sirius XM on the SXM app. Just search angels. Hey, give us a follow on Twitter at locked on angels and at super halo bros on Twitter and Instagram. If you're watching or listening, come on over to YouTube, find today's episode get in the conversation by jumping in the comments, hit that like button and subscribe button on the way down there. It really helps out Mike and I and our channel, Mike, the angels and the A's they played last night They're playing again tonight. What do we have on deck for Monday's show? Well, we're going to recap all four of those games. So if you're looking for the recap, join us on Monday. We're going to talk about all four of those games in detail, but here's what we need you to know. It is trade deadline week. And so all angel news will be found right here and on our socials. So stay tuned because we're going to be the ones that will be breaking the news for you, passing the news along to you and breaking it down on Locked On Angels. All right. We're looking forward to what's going to happen this weekend and up until Tuesday at 3 p.m. 
uh, West Coast time. So get hold on to your butts, everybody. All right. <laughs> Have a great weekend. Until then, my name is John, and that's my brother, Mike. And my name is Mike, and that's my brother, John. Thanks for being here with us, everybody. And we'll see you back here on Monday. Hold on to your butts. <laughs> that's what it means to be an Angels fan yeah. these days. Right. <laughs>